Yeah, definitely. If you guys are a bit newer out there, partner up with Alex. You'll get best. You'll get the best terms. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't we, to say that. Three or four people come to us that have been like, "Hey, man, I, I can't take this down at these current terms," and you know that's a great opportunity to to JV a deal, and you know half of a deal or a part of a deal is still better than no deal, right? Oh, yeah. What's up, you guys? We just finished Ask Alex number 47. We had a special guest on this week. His name is Israel Lopez, and he is our main hard money lender with certain lending. Alex, this guy's been helping us get deals to the table for a while now. What were some of your biggest takeaways from today? Man, what a great webinar. Uh, number one was that we discussed very detailed rates, terms, how to structure deals. I mean, hard money lending is so important as being an investor. Make sure you watch a webinar because you're going to learn a ton and you're going to make some money with these deals. Let's go. Aloha, my deal makers. What's up, everybody? I am excited. I am pumped for today's webinar. We're going to be talking about Monet. How's everybody doing today? We're going to be talking about how to fund your deals. So let's get Mr. AK, my right hand man, AKA the COO is in the building. He's been running around all day. Uh, our virtual assistant, our main virtual assistant in Mexico got a little bit sick today. So we've got a, kind of a little bit of a delay. What's up, my man? You good? Yes, sir. What's up? Just here at the big house in Maui. How are you? Where are you at? There we go. A little less glare there. I'm down in uh, San Diego. I'm actually down visiting my uh, my dad and my twin brother. So just having a good little family weekend, uh, week, week, midweek. Um, so we're going to go down and check out a concert. My dad's a big uh, Grateful Dead uh, fan, as most of our fathers were, you know, if you're in our age group. And uh, so we're going to go see an old Grateful Dead show uh, tonight down in San Diego. It should be fun. So fun fact, you guys, Will has a twin brother and then I have a twin brother. Isn't that interesting? And I've known Will for years and I never knew he had a twin, but he knew I had a twin because he met my brother. That's interesting. And we were both born down here in San Diego, both both sets of twins. So always uh, a yeah. lot of connections there, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. So you excited for today or what? Yeah, today should be awesome. You know, obviously, um, you know, you, you guys have, you know, provided feedback in you know, the webinars, you guys have provided feedback in our Facebook group, and you guys have let us know that like lending, right? That's obviously something that makes people nervous, right? When you're talking about actually doing the deal, right? So you can find a deal, you can get a contractor, but like funding the deal, that's something that gives, uh, you know, a lot of people a lot of uh, nerves, right? So uh, really excited. We have a, a killer special guest this week. Israel is going to be joining us. Uh, Israel is actually our main uh, hard money lender that we work with. Um, on probably about 99% of our deals. And so, you know, we're literally going to kind of go through step by step uh, what hard money lenders are looking for, what it is that we're looking for, what kind of goes on in, in a lending agreement. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun. And in, in the meantime, guys, uh, I see a couple of people kind of already using the chat. I see Rashawn in here. I see Andy, you know, Ali, some of our usual and Ben. Uh, but guys, if you are new and, and you've never been here before, go ahead and let us know over there in the chat. Uh, where it is that you're from, like where are you tuning in from? Where can we find you? Are you on Instagram, Facebook? Where, where's the best place to get connected uh, with you? So for instance, if you're a Sean, you know, he's out in Fillmore and you can connect with him at, at Roshan underscore Roro. Uh, so really good right there because that allows people to know like if I'm doing deals in Fillmore or looking at deals in Fillmore, you know, Rashawn might be somebody that I want to get in connection with and, and see if he knows something that I don't know, right? Yeah, and you know, I want to make a quick point about networking, you guys. And you know, maybe this is gonna be a point for another webinar, but I had this thought. And when you're first starting out, you're networking to see what other people are doing so it can help you refine, like, you know, your strategy, like what you want to do, how you fit into this game, right? It, but once you start doing some deals, then you're networking to see what other people are doing to, like, you know, fill in some blind spots, to, to get some vendors, to find more GCs, to get a little bit better at what you're already doing. And finally, once you're already advanced and doing you know, several deals or have done many deals, then you're networking to maybe attract team members and attract deals at that point. So I think people too often go and they, oh, they want to network and, you know, they're brand new and they, they want the deal. Like, you know, uh, uh, somebody networking that has a deal is probably not going to want to give it to a new investor, right? So I just wanted to kind of make that. I'm, I'm going to make a video about that because I talked to uh, one of my interns yesterday, uh, Nelson, about it. And he, you know, he thought it was a great idea. And I thought um, that it's something we should share. So people kind of know their steps to networking based on where you're at in the journey. So 
Yeah, no, I like how you broke that down, right? Because there are stages of it. So for instance, like when I went and I went to the mastermind the first time with you a year ago, that was a different level of networking, right? Whereas now, you know, that I've been doing this for a year, like you said, I know the strategy that I'm looking for. I know the strategy that we're operating in our business. It's a little bit easier for me to now go in and network. And instead of, you know, being the smallest fish in there, that's maybe just looking for a couple of people to grow with. You know, now I'm actually, like you said, going in there, we're looking for people that are, hey, this guy right here can help us acquire deals. This guy can help us streamline our construction processes. Uh, you know, so there are definitely different levels um, of networking. And, and guys, you know, we'll, we'll continue to do meetups in person and, and continue to do this virtual uh, meetup. And, and then as you guys know, we do have our Facebook group, uh, which I'll go ahead and post the link to that in a second here in the chat. Um, and if you're not a part of the Facebook group, I do recommend you getting connected on there. Um, I see people in there weekly posting their wins, uh, posting their questions. You know, we had somebody in there having some questions about a lender um, and, and, you know, three or four or five people are going to chime in. So Alex always says, you know, 20, 30 heads or, you know, 40 sets of eyes are always going to be much better than just the one set. So uh, make sure that when you are connecting and networking, you're networking with a purpose, right? Yep, exactly, exactly. So Alex, I know you're in Maui right now, um, but you got a big week coming up and, and uh, you know, big month next month. I know you've been kind of relaxing back at, at Maui for the last couple of, uh, of weeks here, but what's what's kind of been going on with you and, and what's kind of coming up here in the next week or so? Yeah, so I'm, I'm super happy to be back here on Maui. I've been here now this couple of weeks and just getting back into my, you know, normal routines. And, and then also since we decided to keep this uh, property, um, you know, I'm here with my interns we're working on designing uh, the property. Um, I got a designer working on that. Um, and then with the interns kind of together so we can get this thing furnished, get it designed, get it finished, um, you know, very soon. And so, um, you know, also I've been, just, you know, enjoying Hawaii, right? This is the water, the weather. Uh, went over to uh, Oahu last week, had a great time there for a little bit, um, you know, connected with a couple of high level uh, investors there and some of my friends and everybody that I know over there, which is super fun. Um, you know, and we were closing on some deals in LA. So just been busy, you know, and you guys see stuff and some of you guys uh, that follow us, uh, follow me, follow Will, um, you know, see a lot of stuff we, we, we share, but you know, my, my phone is, it never stops. <laughs> and I have two phones, so it's crazy, but I'm super grateful. I'm happy to be here uh, as far as getting this webinar up. You know, we do this for you guys. Remember, we don't get paid anything for this. We're just giving the game out. Uh, that way you guys can run with it and help yourselves out and you know get deals and and definitely improve your financial situation deal deal by deal so um yeah not much else going on i will be heading down back to uh mexico this weekend um wanted to be there for a dia de los muertos um so haven't been there in mexico for that so i definitely want to check that out and then we have a couple of interviews set up with the new uh virtual assistants that we're potentially going to be uh putting on adding to the team as you know we're being very uh, bullish on that because it's, it's helping uh the right ones uh, you know, with, in the right seat are helping us so much with the business that uh, we're doubling down on that. And, uh, but we got to make sure they're trained, they're the right people, they got the right mindset. So I'm going to go down there and meet them in person as well. Um, but other than that, man, I'm just excited to put on this hard money uh, webinar today because I know how important it is. I know uh, how many struggles I've had with uh, getting the right funding to take these deals down. It's one thing to get good at finding deals, but then if you can't take them down or there's no way you could get them funded, then you know, it's very, very difficult and frustrating. So I want to help you guys out with that. Yeah, and, and you know, you nailed it, right? Like it can be a frustrating part of things. And sometimes that's why people decide to just wholesale, right? Is they're like, man, rather than me have to take down this deal, get the financing, deal with the contractors, like, man, that's a lot of moving parts. I could really just wholesale this to somebody and make a quick check and have them handle it because maybe they're more qualified or, or have the track record. Um, but like you guys will find out today, we have a, a really killer special guest uh, we'll welcome him onto the screen here in just a minute. And, you know, we'll kind of dive into hard money lending and, and where, you know, this kind of, you know, allows you to scale your business, right? Because Alex, if you were using just cash to buy homes in Maui and LA, you know, we would have probably had to stop a long time ago, right? Because these are very high entry points and, and price points in competitive marketplaces. And, you know, if you're buying million dollar homes, unless you have $10 million in cash, you're, you're probably not gonna be able to flip four or five of those at a time. So um, yep. great point there. And, and I think it should be a, a good webinar for people of all different levels, right? Because even when you're scaling, hard money becomes you know very necessary, but even when you're just doing your first deal, um, it allows you to leverage and, and you know use other people's money 
whether it's a lender or a, a private lender, you know, to kind of grow that that result. So, um, Alex, if you don't mind making me the host, um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get our special guest into here. His name is Israel. Uh, Israel Lopez is actually our uh, lender who lends on, as I mentioned, about 90% of our deals. Um, so we'll go ahead and get him promoted onto panelist here. And then Alex, let's go ahead and open up the Q&A field. So guys, the Q&A box down there in the bottom left is open if you guys want or have any questions for Israel. We're going to go ahead and dive into some questions that we have and, and questions that have kind of come in on the Facebook group and through chat. But in the meantime, if you guys see anything or anything comes up, uh, go ahead and use that there on the Q&A field. And, and uh, I see Israel, we got you on screen here. So welcome, buddy. Good to see you, man. My man, Israel in the building. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, Israel, I uh, work for Cern Lending. Um, I met uh, the CEO, Charles McKinney, extremely smart individual, a couple years ago. And then uh, about the last, close to the last year or so, we've been working with them very closely. So I'm happy to have him on today. He's a wealth of knowledge. He's you know, another thing that I found very valuable with Israel is that he's funding loans in many different states. He's an investor himself, and he's around some very high-level people up there in the Pacific Northwest. So, like, this guy knows his shit. So, um, and I learn from stuff from him all the time about structuring, uh, structuring deals, um, you know, how we can best take these deals down and make the most profit possible because the financing can make or break a deal all day long. What's up, Israel? You all right? Yeah, how's it going? I couldn't hear you guys for a second there. Thank you very much for having me on. It's a pleasure working with you and excited to see who we can meet and help out today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. And, and like Alex mentioned, like, like, you know, Israel is an investor himself, right? He is, you know, a lender himself. He's been in real estate for a good point, you know, portion uh, of his, his business career. And guys, that's really what you want in a hard money lender, right? Is, is a, they're, they're the additional set of eyes, you know, that kind of looks over that deal once you submit it and be like, guys, this doesn't look like your normal deal. Like, is something going on here? Am I missing something? You know, is, is there something going on here? And so having somebody like Israel in your corner that is an investor, right? So he understands that side of the business, but also understands the lending side, uh, you know, is very important to helping you understand the lending, the nuances that go on with it and, and the different kind of, you know, ways to get about it. So again, Israel, we, we appreciate you spending some time and, and joining us here today. And I'm sure um, all of our attendees do as well. Yeah, thank you. Just as just as Will mentioned, I'm, I'm an investor myself. So when I look at every single deal, I mean, I'll tell you if the deal doesn't pencil and I'll tell you probably walk away because you're going to lose money on it. Is that, uh, for a lot of investors, especially if you're starting out, I want you guys to be successful. Um, it really, you get burned pretty hard early on if you do the wrong deals. So you can put, put, put out a business. So those first couple of deals are very important. And as Will mentioned, I'm an investor myself. A lot of what I do is I build single family new construction builds out in Seattle. Uh, so that's my main bread and butter out here. And But my main focus these days is just lending. Um, so year to day, I've funded about 51 million across the nation. And we're looking to close out at 75 to 80 for the end of the year. So we're pretty pretty excited to see where we where we land at the end of the year. Big numbers. Yeah, baby. Love it. Good. Good stuff. And uh, yeah, Israel, if you don't mind, you know, I know you kind of, you know, gave a, a quick snap into, into what you're doing, but do you mind just giving us a kind of like, you know, three to five minute, you know, recap of like kind of how you fell into lending, how you fell into the single family rebuilds and, and give us a kind of a recap of, of where Israel is now and, and where you kind of started in your investing career. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very important. So early on in my career, I actually started in medicine. So I did a bunch of medical research and worked with a bunch of doctors quickly realized that wasn't where I wanted to be. So I pivoted into real estate by going through new construction, basically becoming a general contractor. So my family owns a general contracting business out here in Seattle. In the first year as a general contractor, I managed 10 flips and one ground up new development. After then I realized I sales was my thing. So on this, on the new construction side, on the general contractor side of things, I really love sales. So that's why I got my real estate license, realized I didn't like opening doors for people. Then I <laughs> jumped into lending. Uh, so lending is a lot faster pace. You can close in five, 10 business days and call it, call it a day onto the next deal. And that, that's where I really fell in love, strategizing, putting deals together. And I'm a very impatient person. So I like uh, quicker results. And that's why when we got to get things done fast. And definitely, I, I definitely fell in love with lending. As I said, it, as long as you want something, if you have the right mindset, 
you'll get there. Uh, obviously, the medical field wasn't for me. So that's how I jumped into uh, real estate. Great, great background. And, and, you know, again, like like you said, right, there's ups and downs to it. You, you know, I love how you said it, right? Like, I realized I really didn't want to open doors, right? Like, and that's all I was doing is, is Saturday, I was holding the house open and making sure the door was locked on the way out. But, um, you know, again, I, I love the other point that you mentioned there, which is, you know, you found what your passion was, right? So, Alex, we were talking about this last week, how, you know, you need to find what it is that you're good at and find the people that are going to plug in around you so that you guys can lift each other up, right? So you're sitting in this, you know, medical office and you're like, bro, this sucks. You know, you're sitting there at this real estate office and you're like, I just want to sell. Um, and so now you've found yourself in a place where you can really kind of sell and you have a, a sales cycle that lasts on average about what, 10 to 20 days um, is about how long it takes for you to get a deal together, right? Yeah. And the beauty about our space in particularly is that there's, you're not prospecting as much. So a lot of our business is repeat clients. And that's what I love. I love working with all the people I, I work with you guys. I know some big players out in different markets and whenever I'm in those markets, we just hang out. We're just friends um, because it's truly a partnership. It's not a transactional business in my eyes. It's more like, Hey, let's, let's try to get these deals done together and, and let's move on to the next one. And let's, let's create lifestyle business. Let's, let's crush your goals. Let's crush my goals. We're all in this together at the end of the day. And let me make a point about this real quick guys, because I've dealt with many different hard money lenders and that's exactly why we use uh, Israel and certain lending so much, because um, I remember driving the car with, you know, uh, Charles McKinney uh, last couple months ago. And he basically said, our company was built to help real estate inv investors become wealthy. So, you know, where, whereas I've dealt with other hard money lenders where they're just trying to get a buck. They're just trying to make some money on you. They're, they don't really care about you and your business, helping you grow where you want to go or anything like that. And so um, I definitely feel like that working with them, that they're helping our business and they want to grow with us. And uh, that's the type of alignment you need uh, in this business because uh, it's very sharky and it's hard to trust people. And, you know, if they don't do what they say they're going to do, it can really have some serious repercussions on your wealth, on your profit, on, on, on deals, on, on losing stuff. So there's stuff, you know, there's, it's a high stakes business. Um, and I've lost deals because, you know, lending partners have pulled out at the last minute. And so you just really want to make sure that you are with the right people um, that can help you take these deals down, but also to understand your business and where you're going. Yeah. Huge, huge point there. And, uh, you know, again, I, I want to just take a, a note here. So like last weekend, right, Thatch had a, a really big meetup up in the Pacific Northwest in Seattle. And I had like four or five people shoot me a text message. It was like, yo, I just met Israel out here. Like, is that the guy you guys do business with? And I was like, yeah, that's our guy. Like he's out there, he's active. You know, he, he's not just being the front. And Alex, like, you know, like you said, we actually had a deal, uh, the one that we were just recently purchased where uh, the seller offered us a lower price if we went with a different lender. Um, he had an association with a lender and, and we said, hell no. He said, we'd rather pay an extra 10K and use our lender that we know will perform, know will be there, know what the timeline is going to be like. And, and, you know, we were just more comfortable paying more to work with somebody that we have worked with on a regular basis. So you can't underscore, you know, the repeat business side of things and, and how that comfortability helps you, you know, grow and scale your business. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that's the first time I heard that for, from you guys. Like, I, I didn't know. But honestly, you'll everybody, you'll see different marketing material out there. Hey, I'll lend to you at rates in the sixes, rates in the sevens. But it, a lot of what people don't see, you'll see the marketing side of it. That's what they'll front. But execution in whether or not they'll actually give those terms, because a lot of lenders out there will retrade you. And that's very important when, when you're aligning yourself with the lender. Like my biggest fear to, to any one of my investors is having to retrade them. And a lot of the time it happens because of appraisals. But other than that, like, I want to close a deal at the original terms. And a lot of other lenders will bait and switch you. And that's that's what gives us a bad name in the industry. Yeah. So let, let's jump into some questions, guys. Uh, do we see anything in the chat box? I, I mean, I personally have a bunch of questions, but do we have anything from the uh, people that are attending? Uh, because, you know, Israel, again, is a wealth of knowledge. So make sure you guys tap into it. Yeah, guys, go ahead and use that Q&A feature down there. And then in the meantime, um, what I'm going to do, Alex, is I'm going to go ahead and pull up my screen share. And what we'd like to do, guys, is, is just show you an example of what we have to do when we take down a project. So um, are you guys able to see my screen here? So what we're looking at here, guys, is this is essentially our 
certain lending, and that's the lender, uh, you know, again, that Israel works with. And so when we get a deal in our pipeline and, and we think we're about to close on it, right, we will typically come into here and we will hit the new project tab. And that's where this comes up to say, let's get started. So let's say that we are purchasing a property because um, that's typically what we're doing. And typically we're going to be purchasing a single family property. We're typically financing as an entity. We typically provide a personal guarantee. So Israel, what does a personal guarantee mean? So personal guarantee basically means, let's say worst case scenario, we have to foreclose for whatever reason. We take, we'll take the property back and sell it. Assuming the property does not suffice the outstanding debt uh, for which you owe us, we'll go after that individual and make sure that they pay us. So that's the worst case. There's a lot of lenders in the industry that are in the business to lend to, lend to own. Uh, where it comes to us, that's not our business model. We we want you to be successful. So a lot of times we'll give you extensions, we'll refinance the loan to make things work. So we'll work with you. Um, so we're not in the business to take your property. That's the the last all say all. If everything were to go bad, you know, hey, we, we have a little bit of a personal guarantee on there. So, um, you know, again, usually you're going to want to know, are we, are we dealing with a manufactured home, a condo, a townhome? Um, and then the big question is, are you going to renovate this property, right? And Typically, we do not submit offers in here, guys, if we are in the making an offer or actively looking stage. Uh, but that's just because, again, Alex and I are a little bit more established investors, and we typically aren't going to waste our time on a deal unless we know that that deal has an imminent chance of closing. So typically for us, we're either going to be submitting it at the under contract or at the making an offer. But I will shoot Israel a text that lets him know, like, hey, man, we made an offer on this, and, and I think we're pretty close to getting it accepted. Um, we should know in the next day, but knowing this rate would really help us, you know, make sure that we have this locked in and, and is at the right kind of uh, price point. So, so, you know, typically we're going to have in there the under contract, and typically we're going to want to have it vacant. Although Israel and certain lending will lend in these other types of situations, uh, just typically that'll affect the appraisals and things like that. So, um, always something to keep in mind there and, and Israel can, you know, give you guys a, a little bit more insight on, you know, what affects those things uh, and what doesn't, right? So let's say we're going to go with 5730 Main Street. So this is just a couple doors down from a house that we did in Southgate with uh, Israel uh, and certain lending. So when you type in the address, typically it's going to auto populate most of the stuff in there for you. And at that point, you will just put in your purchase price. So let's say we're buying this at $430,000. Let's say there's an assignment fee of $15,000. What is that going to do to this uh, rate here, Israel? Is, are you guys going to be able to lend on that $15,000? Or is that $15,000 something that you guys cannot lend on? So if we're talking about hard money or, uh, for the acquisition phase of it, we are financing assignment fees, typically of up to 15% of the purchase price. So in this case, it would definitely finance that $15,000 assignment fee. So basically your, your acquisition price is now 445 instead of the contract uh, price that the wholesaler got it for at 430. And guys, again, I wanna point that out because you know Alex mentioned this and Israel's mentioned this, like this is a company that wants to see investors grow their business. The companies that do not include that assignment fee that's not working with an investor, right? That's saying, hey, we're, we're making you come out with this money when we know you don't need to and you don't want to, right? Um, so that is a, a big portion of it, guys, is knowing that your lender has your back and wants to see you do this deal and wants to see you be successful. And you know, them absorbing that, that assignment fee, that's a, a big portion of it because some lenders do not do that. Quick story on that. Uh, I, was, uh, I had this deal in Palmdale locked up a couple of years ago and we wanted to wholesale it because we got such a great deal. I um, mean, it was a little bit far because, you know, Palmdo isn't that close to where, you know, to core LA, it's an hour away. So we were thinking, oh, hey, why don't we just wholesale this? We had, I had the buyer lined up. He was somebody I knew. He was a broker, uh, somebody I wanted to do a deal with. Uh, he liked the deal. He vetted it, went out there. Uh, we're literally at the five yard line. And then he calls me and says, I can't do the deal because the lender won't lend me your assignment fee. So uh, it doesn't make sense for me anymore because I have to put a lot more cash down because I have to pay your assignment fee and I have to give the lender a down payment. So it pretty much killed that deal. And we were at the last minute. So I had to go find a joint venture partner and then we took the deal down. Fortunately, we made $80,000 on that deal uh, and we split that. However, it was a huge headache. 
I was, it was, it was very difficult and I would not want to go through that again. So just I like that. Want to about lender again because of that, right? Because of those headaches and the hoops and everything. It's like, man, I, I would rather not deal with that experience again. Yeah, exactly. And so just to be aware of the guys, when you're wholesaling, the, the investors that you're wholesaling to, um, you know, if they're getting hard money lending, then if you have a huge assignment fee, then there could be, uh, you know, an issue there. That's a, a reason why sometimes people double close, right? They'll close on the property and then the next day oh, they'll sell it to the investor because then they won't have to deal with that type of stuff as much. Um, so just kind of something to be aware of, but I've definitely had issues with that. And we've paid wholesale fees. I think recently we paid a $70,000 wholesale fee on a deal. It had a lot of meat on the bone, but you know, they did were able to finance a large portion of that. And uh, any other lender might not have been able to do that. And it would have made our cash to close significantly higher. So, you know, these numbers, these cash requirements can make a bigger deal on both sides, whether you're wholesaling or you're an investor. And again, that, that's why having a, a great lender on your side that you know you can kind of fall back to and, and help you out and guide you through it. Um, the other thing is like when, you, when we deal with Israel, like we let them know everything that we know, because if we let them know something that we, or if we don't let him know and he finds it out later, like that's just going to kill the deal later. So we like to let him know everything up front. Is there an assignment fee? Is there a budget? Like, what are we looking at? That way he has all the information. So um, continuing on on here, you know, again, this is not the actual numbers for this house, but let's just put in here that our ARV is, you know, 60K and, and that we're going to need about 40 Pay to get there. So Israel, with the renovation budget, and I know we got a couple questions coming in here, guys. So uh, we'll start to answer some of these as we go here. For the renovation budget, you guys typically will lend on that as well, right? Yeah. So we'll wrap in 100% of the renovations into your loan. And the very important item to note here, which distinguish us, it distinguishes us from other lenders, is that we do not charge you on that 40000 on day one. We only charge you on those funds when they're drawn and moving forward. A lot of lenders will charge you on the full total loan amount, regardless of whether or not you draw on those funds or not on day one, which we like to pass on those cost savings to you. And that's very important. It's not a lot. It's something that you don't really know unless you ask or once you're in the loan and it's too late, but it's still something that will impact your bottom line. Huge, huge points there, right? Because guys, again, if, if you don't have that, uh, you know, that funding in there, then that's like Alex mentioned, the cash to close and the cash to take down the deal, you know, that can can be significantly affected, especially like Israel said, if they're charging you that money up front before you even get a chance to use it. So you're already paying day one before you even, you know, break ground. So um, this right down here is the project description. And again, guys, this is where we let Israel know everything that we know about the project. Like, hey, this is a cosmetic fix and flip. Seller needs some time. The home is in a neighborhood that the operator is very familiar with. We did a project a couple doors down. That way, when Israel is looking over this and he's getting ready to you know, fund the deal, he can say, hey, yeah, they did do a project a couple doors down. Got it. We did make money on that project. Everybody made money on that project. This looks pretty similar to that project. The numbers are all pretty similar. I think we're going to see some similar results. Um, so we do always try to include as much info in there as we can. Um, once you get into this, now is when we start to get into some specifics about the loan date. So typically, you know, Israel and certain lending need about 10 to 14 days uh, for us to make something happen. I, you know, so we would typically, you know, shoot for a closing date sometime after that. So we'll just put 1115 on here. We're always going to do a 12 month uh, term loan and, and that's called gap funding. So we are using certain lending for the gap or bridge funding to, to bridge or gap this deal together. And we are typically gonna ask uh, Israel for 95%, wink, 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 no. <laughs> we'll typically ask for uh, 85 to 90% uh, loan to value. What were you gonna say, Alex? No, see, let me correct that real quick though, Will. If the gap funding would be the, the, the difference of what uh, certain lending lends us and then what we're going to need. Oh, we need. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think that you, you meant to say something like that, but uh, wanna... I think that's what he meant to say. So our, so our loans loan. gap funding is what we use to, to gap that, that uh, the, the, the difference there. And that difference is what we're going to see here. So we're, we're going to have a $430,000 purchase price, which if times, you know, let's say 90% loan to value, we would be asking for $387,000 
And you'll notice guys that they built this out so that it actually does your math right there for you. So if you, you know, and again, we use our past historical data. So if we've done deals with Israel and Southgate before, and he lended us at, at a 90% LTV, that's typically what we're going to go for. And some of our other areas that are a little bit further out from core LA, typically this number might come down a little bit lower to, you know, maybe an 85% loan to value. So maybe we're going to be asking for, you know, $360,000 um, as opposed to, to the other amount. And then we will typically request the 100% uh, of our financing uh, to be covered on our renovation. And, and again, you can ask for half wanna, of that. I do want to add though, so that we don't want uh, to promise too much. The higher leverage comes with more experience. So if you have less experience, don't expect to get the highest leverage, meaning the, the, the highest loan amount, unless maybe it's a monster deal. You're buying this thing like at 50% of what it could be worth and as a cosmetic rehab or something, then maybe we're talking. I mean, do you want to add to that, Israel? Yeah, definitely. If you guys are a bit newer out there, partner up with Alex. You'll get best. You'll get the best terms. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't mean to say that. Three or four people come to us that have been like, hey, man, I, I can't take this down at these current terms. And, you know, that's a great opportunity to, to JV a deal. And, you know, half of a deal or a part of a deal is still better than no deal, right? Oh, yeah. Um, so guys, the repayment strategy that Alex and I typically use is going to be sell the property. And that's because we typically are flipping these properties. You can also refinance the loan. So if you're planning on maybe burying the property and, and refinancing with Israel um, and certain lending, you can go ahead and put that option there. You can let them know other, you can let them know if you're going to, you know, just pay it off by month. So uh, typically for us, we're going to go ahead and put on there that we are planning to repay that loan by selling the property a couple of months later. So um, the last page in here, we typically will enter in our entity information, you know, some credit scores, some past bankruptcy, how many liquidities we have, and then we'll go ahead and submit that loan uh, for processing and for approval. So um, again, we just wanted to kind of show you guys this backend page so that you can get an idea of what it is that you have to go through, you know, when you are submitting a file for a loan approval. And, and uh, Israel, do you have anything that you want to kind of follow up on that. Once we hit send, typically Alex and I will shoot Israel a text just letting him know, hey man, I know you already know because you know, you're a business and you're on top of your game and you crush it. So I'm sure you already got the email, but just letting you know, we just submitted a deal and Israel you know, usually will let us know, hey guys, appreciate it. I'll get you back rates either today or tomorrow, depending on when we submitted that. But what kind of goes on, on on your end once we hit that, Israel? Once you submit, it's if if you're in a hurry in a time crunch, it's really important for you to send me something so I know. Uh, otherwise, let's say it comes in. I I usually my operations on the back. I try to get to it in the next four hours. It depends on when it comes in. So let's say if you're on on the weekend, you need to make an offer. Shoot me a text like, hey, I submitted something. Uh, I need to prove a funds letter, and I'll get that to you. Uh, it really, as real estate investors, we never stop working, so we're always looking for deals, hunting for deals. So it's important for that. Um, outside of that, you can expect, assuming you get it in the morning or, or let's say at noon, I'll get you a quote and a proof of funds letter same day to let you know and, and for you to assess what we can do, what we're offering. Outside of that, the next step is usually locking it up under contract so we can start processing the loan. So we really, a lot of not, not a lot of people know, but we're a fintech company, which basically means we we are, we're a financial company where we offer loans and mortgages on the front end, but on the back end, we have 15 in, uh, software engineers on the back end trying to make our lives easier so we can scale and offer the same products with the same service at cheaper rates. And that's what makes us different than other companies. So we're really trying to deliver the same service, no matter where we're talking about in the nation, no matter who the client is. So you guys can all get the same experience. We are a national lender, but we try, we, we're in this for relationships. And we and you can tell that when you start talking to us because you're not just another number. We truly take care of you. You can text us, and and we'll get things squared away from you for you. Um, outside of that, kind of the the nuggets or tips to have in mind for um, those of you who haven't done a deal yet or kind of are getting started is build a scope of work if you have a a renovation component to your project. One because I need to know what is going to be done, and two your contractor will have a clear understanding of what is expected from them. Um, so that scope of work is fundamental for you and your lender. Yeah, and, and that, that's great, right, Israel? Because Ulysses was just asking a question, like what are some things that the lenders, you know, like investors to do beforehand, right? And 
you know, you just nailed it right there. Like you want to know a little bit about the property, a little bit about, you know, like, hey, if there's something in there that I need to know, you know, I'm going to find it out later. You might as well know now than later, right? So um, I think that's a, a great tidbit there. And, and Ulysses, hopefully that answered your question. Is there anything else that you like to kind of have, you know, newer investors do beforehand? Um, you know, I know Alex and I, we've, we've kind of, like we mentioned, have a system going for this, but what else do you prefer for like a newer lender to do uh, before they come to you? I saw somebody asking like, what kind of documents do you need, um, you know, to, to get a, a property underwritten? Yeah, definitely. So in terms of th th those two questions go hand in hand, but a lot of times what we're asking for is third parties, uh, meaning who your insurance agent is for the property, who your escrow closer is going to be, and who the property access will be. So those three points of contact, basically third, part, third party points of contact are very important. Obviously contracts, purchase agreement, host, or assignment agreement. And then outside of that, in terms of financials, we use, only ask for two months of bank savings. So I don't ask you for tax returns, 1099s, W-2s, like forget that. If we're not a conventional lender. Uh, it, it's There's a lot less red tape here. And then outside of that, uh, if you're closing in an entity, obviously I want to know the entity name, operating agreement, uh, and certificate of formation. So very high level stuff. Uh, things that you should have prepared uh, for you to submit a property or kind of to be ready to, to hit the gas pedal is, as I mentioned, scope of work. If you're a newer investor and, and looking to get at your first hard money lender, like this is, these are the five things he's going to rally off right here that you need to have ready to go. Yeah, so it's going to be, do your due diligence, make sure you, you run comps for your as is and ARV values to make sure the deal pencils, because you want to make sure that's profitable. Otherwise, why waste your time on the deal? Scope of work. I want to make sure you have the liquidity to take down the deal uh, or find a partner who does have the liquidity to take it down. Uh, and those are the three main items. I actually don't have five, but those are the three main items. The, the main reason why I see a lot of flippers go out of business is because they leverage to a certain extent where they shouldn't and they don't have any more money to, to either continue funding those deals on the renovation front or even make the payments. So make sure you have liquidity, uh, reserves. I can't emphasize enough, reserve, having reserves, peace of mind money, how a lot of investors call it, is important. It'll let you sleep better at night. Uh, sometimes if you get a private money, private money loan from a family or friend, trust me, Putting good deals together is going to make Thanksgiving a lot less stressful or awkward for you. So make sure you're taking good deals on. Everybody's happier at the, the Thanksgiving table when you're making money, right? I love, love it. it. So guys, I know we showed you a little bit about what a property looks like going in uh, to the portal, but we're going to go ahead and share some details. This is a property that we're you know scheduled to close escrow on here shortly, but just so you guys can see, you know, this is all the information that we just filled out, no assignment fee, rehab budgets, what our renovation budgets are, you know, what's kind of going on down here. But this is what we'll typically get from Israel is we'll get what's called an offer detail sheet. And this will let us know that, you know, Israel is able to fund this deal at 8% interest and two origination points. So two points and 8%, you know, it lets us know what our lender fees, what our draw fees are going to be, what our monthly payment is going to be. Um, so that's what Israel was, you know, alluding to there is if you're doing four or five flips, well, guess what? You're going to have four or five monthly payments that are all kind of going to be due at that same point in the month. And one of our uh, mentees or mentors, uh, Ryan Pineda, actually had that happen early on in his career, right, Alex, where he, you know, got to a point where the first came around and he was like, oh, shoot, I'm going to be buying four deals and I owe $150,000 to my contractors and my lenders. And you know, I, I'm kind of, I'm, at, I'm out of money right now. So, um, you know, that, that's definitely a, a real side of the business. Um, and then the last thing I want to show you guys here is the tasks, right? So as Israel mentioned, if you have these tasks already done beforehand, well, makes it a whole lot easier on Israel and a whole lot easier for him to, to you know, get the loan funded and get you that information back. So escrow contact information, insurance contact information, your purchase and, and wholesale assignment agreements, the, the scope of work, you know, all of those are going to be things that are going to be very necessary uh, to get that deal started and, and get that into the funding phase. So um, hopefully you guys got a, a good little bit of information um, from kind of seeing the back end. I know all lenders aren't going to be the same, uh, but it will be the same if you, you know, get on and, and use certain lending. So uh, let's go ahead and bang out some of these questions that are coming in, guys. If you have a chance um, go ahead and use that QA field. We're just going to rally through some of these uh, pretty quickly here. 
and uh, we'll kind of go from there. And I know the first one you answered in the chat, Israel, you lend in about 42 states. Am I correct? Yeah, we lend in 42 states. I'll, I'll name the ones we don't lend in. So Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, New York, New Jersey, and Alaska. I know I missed like two, but that's because those are, can't say we lend there, but talk to me and I'll get you taken care of. There you go, man. He knows some people who know some people who can get it done, right? <laughs> um, so that was uh, for you there, Tay. Hopefully, um, you know, we got that answered for you. Eric's got a great question. Do you lend to first-time investors? We do. Usually the type of terms you'll be looking are rates in the high eights, assuming it's not Midwest or rural, and then 20% down with 100% of renovations finance. And, you know, again, guys, like we mentioned, the rates that you're seeing and, and the information that you're seeing, keep that in mind that that is, you know, Alex's and I's rate because we've done a, a volume of business. Um, but if you are a first time lender, it doesn't mean that you're out on a deal. You know, it just means that, hey, you might have an extra point that you have to give or an extra percentage or half a percentage point, whatever that might be. Um, and the easiest way to get that rate down is come to that Turkey Day dinner with, with Israel and, you know, let them know, hey, man, we made some good money last year. We're going to keep doing that this year. And, uh, you know, and that's why we see our rates, you know, continue to, to get better and better is because we've done, you know, more and more business. So um, thanks for answering that one, Israel. I know there's a lot of, you know, first time or, or just getting started, you know, investors here in, in the webinar today that are, are going to be able to use that information. So um, what are the requirements for a first time lender? Are, are those any different uh, than the requirements that we kind of went over? No, the, the requirements are the same. Uh, essentially, as a new investor, you'll have actually less requirements. For instance, if you don't have any experience, you don't have to fill that out. Um, but outside of that, it's pretty much standard. As I said, uh, all the tasks, as soon as all those are done, like, shoot, we can, you can have all that completed. And as soon as you lock up the deal, that loan is automatically going to move into underwriting. Cool. So yeah, I mean, pretty simple, right? You provide your info, your bank statements, all the info that you need. And, and it doesn't matter if you're a first time uh, borrower or a 10th time borrower, you're still going to have the, the same stuff needed. And, you know, it gets easier and easier for us, right? Because Alex, we don't need to provide your lender identification anymore. You know, you guys have that on file. So once you get some of those things in, you know, the amount of tasks that you have due on a deal gets quicker and quicker. Uh, but like Israel said, if you're a first time lender, it can also be pretty quick because um you know that's that's what you do right yeah so yeah. let's uh let's answer another couple of these questions tiago's got a great one what is the lowest loan amount that you will provide because i know that's a that's a big one for people sometimes right like you guys have to make money on it right you're not just going to lend a thousand bucks to make 10 bucks because you know that that's not really worth your time or your effort right yeah that's a great question and usually we don't run into this unless you're investing in the midwest which is probably where this uh, question is stemming from our minimum loan amounts are $100,000. And the reason being is it takes us the same amount of effort to do a million dollar loan or a hundred thousand dollar loan. However, anything below that we are, there, there's just secondary market appetite or investor appetite is reduced in, in that kind of niche. For something like that, if you're, I would say true local hard money, you're obviously gonna experience rates in the 12s, 14s and points at two to four. Uh, true hard money or local credit unions are your best friends in those areas. Local credit unions, they will be definitely most familiar with that type of price point. And I'm sure they've done that before, depending on what market you're in. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, again, great feedback there for people that are, are looking to do deals in the Midwest. I know, I know a lot of people here are, you know, doing the investing out of state. Um, so that is where you're typically going to get those lower price deals, right? So uh, Tay was asking if you uh, do require a personal guarantee and we went over that, you do. Um, Tiago's got another great question in here. Do you lend with non-PG? So I think that's the same thing, non-personal guarantee. Um, and, and we did go over that. Hey, Zeus has one. Are you a, a, a you know, wholesale friendly? Like if, if you're a wholesaler and you have a deal, is that something that they could come to you with and say, hey man, are you maybe able to help me fund this and, and take this down as opposed to me you know, wholesaling it to somebody else? Oh yeah, absolutely. You, you're essentially a borrower at that point. You're not a wholesaler. You just got a pretty, I'm, I'm hoping a, a pretty good wedge deal. Um, outside of that, being wholesale friendly is kind of alluding to what Will was saying earlier. Do we finance assignment fees? And yes, we do. Um, even if the wholesale 
fee is above the 15% mark. Like I've been able to get exceptions to go up to 25% of the purchase price. Um, so there's things we can work off of. Obviously we have set guidelines, but we can always get exceptions and, and get creative. Uh, yeah, it's a great question. In terms of the, um, the previous question, the personal guarantee, we can offer loans with or without a personal guarantee. The, the, without a personal guarantee, it's re typically reduced leverage and higher pricing. So the terms aren't as attractive uh, given the higher margin of risk. And guys, remember the riskier the deal, like the riskier the terms, right? If you have a meaty deal, like Alex said, and you're a first time investor and you have a 50% of ARV and you're doing a cosmetic flip, you know, that's where, you know, Israel is going to be able to make a certain couple of exemptions or, or you know, help you get that deal to the finish line um, as opposed to walking in and saying, hey, now nobody gets to make money on this deal, right? None of my investors get to, and you don't, nobody does. So um, that's why having a good investor, uh, you know, hard money lender relationship helps because like I said, like Israel helps us get these deals to the table, helps yeah, us know well, if making the right decision. I'm curious, how often do you uh, write loans where there's no personal guarantee? Just, you know, kind of just curious. It's usually that type of request usually comes in from institutional buyers. So I have a I have several clients who are buying anywhere from 30 to 50 properties in, in each quarter. And they're all getting very much tailored pricing because they're they're massive investors with a lot of capital trying to acquire in, let's say, Atlanta, Houston. Uh, those are markets, for example. But that's kind of that goes in line kind of with uh, your institutional buyers. And that's usually when they ask for that. And again, guys, he, he nailed it, right? Like if, if you're going for a, a deal and you're getting the, the higher rates back, that might just be time to partner with somebody that has access to the better rates, right? You know, if you don't have the personal guarantee, but you have a deal, there's probably going to be somebody on the other side of that coin that says, hey, I have the, the personal guarantee. I don't have the deal though. So let's, you know, see if that can work. So, you know, keep that in mind too, right? Uh, another great question coming in here uh, from Maria. And she's asking, is it better to open an LLC when getting a hard money loan? That question, I'll partially answer it for, with regarding taxes, obviously talk to your CPA or attorney. However, specific states will require you, so our loans are all business purpose mortgages and certain states will require you to attain an entity or get a business purpose mortgage in an entity. So Washington, California, I can lend to individuals or entities. In Florida, for example, because of state guidelines and regulations, they, we can only lend to entities. So it really depends on the state. Um, but in terms of if it's better or worse, um, if you're in an entity, usually you have more liability protection, um, but obviously consult your CPA or attorney. And, and you know, that's the, the big side of both coins, right? There's always going to be the, the lender side and then the tax side. So, um, you know, you, you can get advice from Israel on the lending side, but it might affect your taxes one way or the other. And that would be more you know, specific for a tax professional. So um, Luis has a great question. He's wondering about proof of funds. So do you offer a general proof of funds or a pre-approval letter uh, so that people can you know, make an offer on an MLS property? Yeah, we can offer a generic proof of funds letter. Typically what happens is I need to see a quick screenshot of your bank account or bank statement and I'll forex whatever your liquidity is. So it's a very generic, um, obviously, once you get the deal under contract, I'll give you more tailored terms. And if you wanna see something more tailored to a specific property, send that in and I'll, and I'll give you an, an insight as to what that looks as well, looks like as well. And guys, just to, in case you didn't understand that question, what, what we're saying is that typically on an MLS deal, uh, an agent is gonna require your proof of funds. And that just means that you have the amount of money to take down this deal, right? And that, that's what Israel alluded to earlier is, do you have the liquidity to actually make this deal happen if you were to get the deal and everything were to go down. So, um, you know, having that proof of funds allows an agent to know, well, hey, Alex can buy this house. So if I make an offer to my seller, I'm not going to go tell this seller like, hey, I got a, a buyer, he's ready to go. And then have to come back 20 minutes later and be like, oh, I'm sorry, he was actually just joking. He, he can't afford this house. Um, so that, that is a big portion of, of the game and, and uh, making offers is, you know, having that proof of funds statement, right? Um, so Ulysses has an, another good question. I know this is, is, you know, more on the national local side of things, right? So Israel, would you recommend, you know, doing a deal with a, a local hard money lender or, or, a, you know, a national bigger company that, that lends across maybe multiple states? 
That's fantastic. That's a great question. So there's a big difference between your local and your national guys. A lot, a lot of the times when you go to a local, a local hard money lender, you it's right out of the gate. A lot of times you're getting higher terms. So higher rates, higher points. And the reason being is because they'll find they'll fund rural properties. They won't look at your credit score. Um, so there's a niche for them. However, if you want the best terms, your national guys are going to be your best bet. Uh, a lot of times we do have a little bit more due diligence to do. We want to see a FICO of 660 or better. We can't finance rural properties for the most part. However, if you're experienced, we can we can we can make it work. Um, Alex and Will knows that. Uh, but yeah, essentially, we want to see clean credit and background. Local local hard money will not ask for that. Um, and the, the, we're more cognizant of the type of properties you're investing in. And guys, that's going to be the same across all the spectrums, right? Like you're going to find private money lenders that give you more rate and lower rates and more due diligence and ask more questions. Um, so I think, you know, you're always going to find a pro with a local company and a pro with a, a national company and, and vice versa. It just really depends on the deal and, and what you need and, and how you need it structured, right? I'll give you another example. So I had a property come in through, I think they wanted to fund in Atlanta. They, they got quoted by a local hard money guy, 14% in three points. I came in, this guy had like, had done 10 flips in the last two or three years. I came in, give him a rate of seven and a half to seven and three quarters with one point of origination. So you can tell like the terms are drastically different. Like these days, if you have a stabilized property, where you just need a bridge loan for whatever reason, whether you're waiting for conventional, get your taxes in, in, into play, or you finish a new construction deal and it's just not selling, et cetera, whatever that may be, if you have a stabilized property, I can get rates in the sixes. And I've actually executed, last week, I executed seven townhome, seven new construction townhomes where they were delayed because the city was like three, three months out to install water meters. And this guy's construction loan was due and he was sitting on seven townhomes. They all came in worth at about 6.3. I came in, gave them a million dollars cash out with the rate of six and a half for a 24 month term. You can't find that anywhere else. Like that, that, that is, that is great. Money is so cheap. That's one of our best assets right now. Awesome. Awesome. Love that. And, and like you said, it's, it's how you structure the deal, right? So, you know, that's why we love working with certain lending and, and working with Israel specifically is because he'll help you structure the deal in, in the ways that make sense. Um, you know, th this was a, not a conventional, you know, product, right? This was something where, you know, it might not have fit into certain boxes, but it was something that you guys were able to get done. Um, and, and again, having a lender on your side that can get things done in the crunch time, um, you know, you probably sa saved that guy from having to sell those, those properties at a, at a significant loss a couple months before making a significant gain, right? So um, another question from Edward coming in. Let's say that that guy borrows that million dollars on a 24 month loan, or let's say Alex and I, when we borrow something and we have our 12 month, you know, bridge funding up there. What happens if we pay you back in four months? Are, are we paying a, a prepayment penalty? Do we have to buy you a new Ferrari, um, you know, for paying you back sooner? How, how does that kind of work? That's the beauty. We don't have a prepayment penalty unless we're talking about our 30 year fixed loans. Uh, I don't care if you pay off the loan in month one. I'll be totally fine. We'll still be friends. There's a lot of lenders out there who want to see three months or six months of guaranteed payments for us. We're, we're on your side. We want you to get under out under this, this hard money loan. That's the main reason why we're vertically integrated in our product suite. Like I gave you the acquisition money, which is meant to be a tool and it's a little bit more expensive. And I also get, I also can give you a 30 year fixed loan to get out of that loan. Most of the hard money guys will only give you the, the acquisition money. It's a high interest rate and they don't have an option for you to get out from underneath. As investors, conventional financing is typically hard. Our finances aren't always clean. So our 30-year fixed loan is designed where we don't underwrite you as a borrower based on debt to income. We underwrite the property and how much it cash flows to give you a longer term solution. And even on, on the hard money side of things like our stabilized product can go down to the 6% for 24, 36 months. Uh, and we're trying to create essentially a longer term tool. So you can get from, get out from underneath that high, more expensive hard money where you conducted renovations. And in that, that just, 
I mean, the reason why I'm with certain lending is because we truly care to solve for people's problems. And you can tell with the products that we offer. And guys, I don't know if you didn't you know, catch it right there, but like, like you said, like they are actually going to bat for you. And I think you mentioned it earlier, right? Israel, like you would rather you're, you're on the investor side, not the people that are lending you money. Obviously, you know, you have your fiduciary duty to them too, but at the end of the day, you want to see the, the, the person that's borrowing the money and taking down this deal be successful as well. And that, that's a huge, huge part of it. Yeah. And you, you hit it right on the head, especially like different, different hard money lenders have different business models lend to own, et cetera. Don't want to name any people out there, but definitely just get aligned. Make sure your goals are goals, your goals are aligned because that will make or break deals. Like there's transactional guys out there trying to make a quick buck. But for, for us, it's more, we're, we're in the relationship type of business, even though we're, we're a national lender, we want it where we want to see you succeed. We want to grow together. And more than anything, we're in this for the long term. We want to be around for a very long time. So Trust me, this the real estate investing investing sphere is so small. I can be in New Orleans, I can be in Seattle, and just about everybody knows each other. So do good business, and uh, everything will be fine. Love that, and and uh, we have one more question uh, coming in from Tay, um, just asking about what the LTV that you lend at is. Um, and then in the meantime, we'll go and welcome everybody else onto the screen, and and we can all kind of hang out like normal and. Um, you know, say what's up to Israel. I know he's going to give out his contact information here. You know, if anybody needs any any questions on hard money lending and, and loans, um, you know, he'd be the guy. But uh, Tay was just wondering what the LTV is that you typically lend at. And, and I know for us, um, it typically varies deal by deal, right? Yeah. So we can, our maximums are 80 to 90% of total project costs subject to like 75% of the after repair value. And depending on what experience, how much experience you have in the last three years will limit our maximum leverages. So that's what I was saying. Our maximums will range from 80 to 90. Uh, we have three different tiers, zero to one, two to four and five or more uh, projects are completed in terms of flips or birds in the last three years. And that's how we categorize things. Uh, but yeah, definitely ranges from 20% down to 10% down depending on where you are in the spectrum. And guys, that's important too, because the more money you put down, like that's the cash to close on a deal. Um, so that, that's, you know, what Israel is talking about is how leveraged are you and, and how much, you know, liquidity do you have to, to buy the next deal? And so the lower amount that they will give you, you know, that's less money out of your pocket. And, and uh, that, that really does become important when you're, you know, scaling and doing multiple flips at, at the same time. Alex, I know, um, you know, we're big, big fans of Israel. Uh, you know, big fans of Charles McKinley and, and certain lending. Um, we've also had on here, guys, uh, you know, Natalie Bueno. She's a little bit different in the hard money space. She's more of a broker. Um, can you go over the differences real quick, Israel, between a broker of hard money and an actual lender, an institutional lender like yourselves? Yeah. So with the broker, a lot of the times they're looking for the best solution. Uh, and, and they're typically a little bit better if you've got some complicated situation going on. But a lot of times they, they're assessing your scenario and, and shopping it around to different lenders. The difference between myself, who I'm a direct lender, and Natalie, who's a broker, is I have control of the process entirely. If you call me, I have direct access to our underwriters, operations team, collateral team, even, the, even when it comes down to the terms. So you're essentially, Natalie's essentially a, a middleman where myself, it, it may be a little bit harder to get uh, best terms just because she has to make money too. Like everyone has to make money. She has to make sure you get, she gets the, those Christmas presents. But for us, I'm with certain lending where I can go to my CEO and be like, hey, Alex has got this, this deal, something went south. We need to make it happen. And we need to give them the best terms. And we can make that happen as opposed to Natalie's shoes. She's kind of bound to the guidelines that all these other lenders give her. Whereas as opposed to myself, I can just pick up the phone and, and, and decide whether or not we can make it work. Uh, you can go to that underwriting desk and let them know, hey, we need to you know, do something here. But Natalie might not have that direct connection. So I, I love how you kind of, you pointed that out. Like you are the person, whereas she is kind of this, this middle person, middle woman, right? Well, yeah, I think so in, in her defense, so I mean, and because I don't, you know, I, Natalie's is still an integral part of our business. We still do deals with her. Um, you know, being a broker does allow you, like he just said, with, um, sometimes with, you know, with 
the right brokers like a Natalie Bueno that's established that has a large network of private investors, she's able to do deals that you know Israel certain lending cannot do. Uh, and so you know right. you really have multiple lenders in your stable because you know you never know what kind of deal you're going to have. Now we typically send most deals to Israel because of you know the service and then the terms and then you know long term growth. But we're still sending deals to Natalie because there's deals that Israel can't do that she definitely can do. And also, uh, for example, uh, Natalie got me a hard money second mortgage on one of my properties that I bought subject to, which was everybody told me it was impossible and she got it done. So it, it, the point is just, it was relationships and each lender is a little bit different. Uh, there's there's some pros and cons, just make sure you understand both. Yeah, and then you hit, a, you hit the nail on the head, Alex. Natalie's gonna be able to do your more creative stuff for my side, the guidelines, right? Whereas Israel has the guidelines, she might be a little, you know, able to move around. I love that. Yeah. And typically she can close like faster too. Like she can close like in a week where, you know, that would be stressful for certain lending. So again, you know, there's just a balance based on the need of the deal itself, but you got to have really, you know, some options there, but we got that one, two punch and we're happy. It, it, there's, there's different pricing. There's creativity that goes on. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the terms look on, on Natalie's side. But usually uh, brokers charge a bit more. Uh, they typically can close faster. They don't look at credit. So you have any if you have major credit issues, they're your guys to go to. For me, I have guidelines that I have to abide by. All my loans are in first position. So that's a great example you gave Alex. Anything second lien position or, or creative outside of any first lien position mortgages, she's probably going to be your best bet. And guys, if, if you have any other questions, you know, now is now is your chance. We got Israel on here. This guy is, is an incredible mm -hmm. lender and he's spending an hour of his time with us here today. So um, Israel, if you don't mind, uh, do you mind kind of passing out your, your email in the chat um, or contact number or whatever the best way is uh, for people that, that do have some more specific questions, maybe some one-off questions for you. Uh, but in the meantime, I saw Ed over there raising his hand. Uh, let her in, man. I is a little specific, um, and thank you guys. Uh, this info is very helpful, um, and I really appreciate that um, there's no prepayment penalty because that's an issue I'm coming up with now. Um, so my situation is I have a 32,000 square foot lot. I um, want to divide into four parcels. It'll be about 8,000 each. Now, in regards to the ground up construction, with the, let's say hard money to purchase, hard money, and then would you finance the construction as well on that? on all four properties because it would be all from scratch. So is it raw land at the moment or is there like a tear down? There is a house on the, it's just a 900 square foot house on a 32,000 lot. Okay. So what I would suggest you do is get a hard money loan for just a purchase only hard money loan on that property. That will give you the time to subdivide and attain building permits mm -hmm. for that subject lot. At which point you can assess, do you, can I sell these off for a profit? Essentially, you're just entitling land and selling it to a builder. Or do I want to go through and build all four? Once you have those issued building permits, now you can go out and get a construction loan. Refinance out of that bridge loan into a construction loan to fund all four developments or a subsection of them. So you don't have to take all of them down yourself. You can replenish your liquidity by selling two or three or even one and then take down a, a subset. That's what I would do if I were in your shoes. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Will, you'll be hearing from me soon. <laughs> oh, man, I, I knew exactly what deal you were talking about when you said it. I was like, all right, I, I know what, I know what he's asking. Um, right. Guys, again, you. Uh, you know, this, this has been absolutely fantastic. And, you know, again, again Israel, we're, um, you know, more than grateful for the, you know, continued level of high service that, that you continue to deliver to us and our business. And uh, hopefully everybody in here on the chat um, was able to get some good value out of this. Hopefully some people on the chat might be in that, you know, rookie uh, investing stage and, and might be needing, you know, that next step of the way, which is, is probably going to be lending on a deal. Um, so like I said, man, you know, Israel just shared his info in the, in the chat there. Uh, make sure you guys save that info. Make sure you get in touch with Israel. If you do have any questions, this guy, um, you know, again, is making deals come through for us on, on a regular basis. So um, I also put in on the chat, the Facebook group. Uh, if you guys have not joined the Facebook group yet, I highly recommend doing it. Uh, you're going to find people like Edward in there that are vocal and sharing and, you know, giving you feedback and, and offering to help. Um, you know, I know he's an agent and, and is willing to look at any house with anybody, anytime. 
Um, I know there's other people in there that are connecting and, and offering help. So uh, I made a post in there, guys. It says roll call and it just asks where you're from and what your IG tag is. So if you're new today, go to the Facebook group, connect with some people in there. There's gonna be some people in your local market. And if there aren't, go ahead and post where you're from and where people can connect with you. And you might find some people in your local market kind of come out of the woodworks and, and you know want to connect and do some deals with you as well here. Um, other than that, Alex, uh, I know you have a big week coming up next week. I know we're going to do a deal review next week, guys. So that's always super fun. Um, this is you know me and Alex's favorite webinar that we do when we get to actually look at deals. That's what we do all day, every day is look at deals. Um, so we're going to get to look at some deals with you guys next week. And then the week after, we'll have another special guest on here. Um, so, you know, again, guys, we, we appreciate you guys for coming back week in and week out. Um, and, you know, you'll see us here on the flip side. Yeah, one last thing I want to say, you guys, is you're not going to need a loan if you don't got a deal. So go out there, take some action, make some offers, and get some fucking deals. Let's go, guys. Let's, Let's go. Do it. Let's go. Let's go. Those deals. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Will. Great meeting. I appreciate everybody. you, so We'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you. Thank you guys.